Today is my great pleasure to have David York here with me. He's the producer director of Weibo's War. So thanks a lot, uh, David, for being interviewed by me. Thank you. So let me ask you, how did you come upon the subject of uh, Weibo Ludwig, and, and when did you start to or realize that hey, I want to make a documentary about him? Well, I, you know, I'd actually known Weibo Ludwig's story for years. I was in Alberta filming a lot in the period of his original trial. Uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and I remember, you know, the coverage of the trial, I remember Weevil Ludwig would come and uh, give these, you know, incredible impromptu sermons on the courthouse steps, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I always thought he was a fascinating character, obviously a dramatic story, and, uh, you know, and a, an attractive and charismatic figure, so uh, the story has been with me for you know, like I said, 12 years. But so did you get to know him through all those years? Like, did he know? No, not at all. Um, I approached, uh, you know, as people's environmental, uh, you know, consciousness have you know, increased over the course of the 2000s, and as more people came into conflict with oil and gas, the story was always rattling around in my head. So I approached the family in 2008 first, mm -hmm. and... Uh, asked if I could come up and have a visit and talk about making the film. Mm. So how did that process go? Did they agree to immediately? It's a big issue of trust too. I mean, they, they can kind of have to trust you in some sense uh, sure to they tell they the story fairly. Sure they tell, talk I mean, about that. There were, you know, there were, there were questions from the beginning. I mean, they told me later at first that they suspected that I was an undercover cop. Mm. Um, Possible. But, uh, you know, and uh, not unexpectedly, as the camera, as the family's been, you know, under surveillance, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the object of police interest for you know more than a decade. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, once we got you know over the original uh, you know questions, mm -hmm. um, the big issue was uh, was religious. Um, mm -hmm. The Ludwigs are, I won't use the word fundamentalist, but I'll say fundamentally religious mm -hmm. in that their lives and their actions and their thoughts are informed in a profound and daily way by their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm an atheist, I told them that I was an atheist from the beginning. And uh, they had, you know, huge trust issues as to whether an atheist could or should be allowed to spend time with and tell the story of the Christian family. Mm -hmm. So it's a big problem. And you know what? Over the course of the filming, the family withdrew their support you know, three times, right? Mm -hmm. It's oh. a different thing going up and doing a, you know, a print news piece or a, or a TV journalism mm -hmm. piece. You know, that takes a couple of days. Yeah. And from the beginning, they knew that this was going to be a two-year process. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and it was going to test their patience. How many trips uh, did you go up, and how many days usually each trip? I was around. I don't know the exact number of trips. It's you know, eight or ten trips, mm -hmm. um, seven to ten days per trip. Generally, mm -hmm. a few of them were, as I say, shortened by right. you know, access difficulties. Right. So when you were there, you kind of were guests of, uh, you and your team were guests of their house. Maybe That's correct. You lived there and uh, you, you share meals with them too. We share meals, every, shared meals every day. Uh, mm -hmm. We stayed on the farm in a guest cabin. And uh, like I say, you know, we kind of uh, slipped into their lives mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a kind of a magical way. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of very uh, intimate in a sense. Uh, they, they have to trust you to do a reasonable job, which leads to a question of objectivity. Now, like you being like so close to them and whatnot, um, how do you maintain objectivity? Or objectivity, was it one of the concerns that, uh, uh, or if not, why not? Well, objectivity is a funny word, you know, in, uh, in journalism, objectivities come to mean uh, listening to both sides of a story. That's mm -hmm. why so much daily journalism and TV journalism mm -hmm. seems so stage managed because um, inevitably both sides of the story have a media message and they have media professionals and what you get mm -hmm. is these kind of fruitless ping pong matches mm -hmm. between positions that actually get more divided over the course of it. So, mm -hmm. um, if that's what you mean by objectivity, I'm not interested in it. I think it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's uh, in practice flawed. Mm -hmm. um, instead, 
I think what documentarians have to consider is uh, fairness and um, fairness and depth, right? Mm -hmm. So my objective was to let the family tell their story in their own words at their own mm -hmm. pace, do so slowly, and give the audience the means to watch them, mm -hmm. to watch them carefully, their body language, their the words they choose, and for the audience to come to their own judgments themselves. And from, from my point of view, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's uh, my voice is in the film as a narrator, mm -hmm. but uh, I I never use narration for more than links. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't you know I don't try and set an agenda. I don't try and lead the audience to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to lay out the story as well and as dramatically and as fairly as I can, mm -hmm. with the objective that the audience comes to the end of the film and they have to decide whether they're sympathetic or unsympathetic. Mm -hmm. And I hope they'll ask themselves the question, if the shoe was on the other foot and they were in the Ludwig circumstance, what mm -hmm. would they do? Mm -hmm. So some audience may uh, uh, feel that uh, you are very sympathetic to the Weibo's, uh, Weibo's to, the, to the Ludwig families. What, what, what would you answer that? Well, um, I'm sympathetic with the position they find themselves mm -hmm. in, um, you know, being uh, you know, being a, a, an immediate neighbor to the oil and gas industry that's treated them very poorly. I have great sympathy for the trials that the family has gone through. I admire and respect the family in many ways. You know, their energy and the food's mm -hmm. self-sufficient. They live extremely well. They have a, a rich, intellectually diverse uh, community. You know, there's nothing that isn't open for discussion. And spirited debates around their meal tables. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I don't. Um, I have difficulty with uh, uh, some of their actions. You know, I I don't support uh, bombings and acts of sabotage, and uh, and I'm uncomfortable with the way the family has dealt with the Carmen Willis incident, which mm -hmm. forms an important part of the story. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And here being uh, in Calgary, you're screening a film in Calgary, just literally blocks away uh, from Encana's uh, head, new headquarters, brand new headquarters. W what does that make you feel, or um, what, uh, like, yeah, like, does that make you feel any different that it's, it's screening in Calgary in here? You know, through, through the years, um, you know, starting in the mid 80s mm -hmm. and all the way through the 90s, I've spent an enormous amount of time in Alberta filming um, on documentaries, on IMAX films, and so forth. And I have a great deal of respect for Albertans. I've always admired, you know, my opinions aren't necessarily the same as everybody's, but I've always admired, admired the forthrightness and the clarity that Albertans express their opinions and their mm -hmm. generosity. So my view of this is that Albertans are smart. You know, Albertans don't need an education from me on the oil and gas industry. Albertans know that the oil and gas industry is a major employer. It's the engine of the economy, but that it's also fraught with difficulties for landowners, fraught with difficulties in water and environmental issues. Albertans know all this stuff. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not telling them anything they don't know. Um, what I am trying to do, though, is give them a picture of a man who I don't think they know as well as they think mm. they know. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, uh, w after I watched the film, uh, um, yeah, I, I know the uh, brand new facet uh, of Weibo Ludwig uh, that it's very different from uh, what we've seen on TV, and obviously plus his family, I mean, right. don't get that coverage or right. the, what happened to them. This is what I'm saying, I was saying earlier. Also, you know, it, it, if you only know, if you only know a character or people through mm -hmm. uh, a current affairs lens, mm -hmm. what you're going to get, like in this case, what you're going to get mm -hmm. is you're going to get um, the Ludwig family's point of view, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you know, is an, is not a disinterested point of view, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, and Weibo has his own. Mm -hmm. um, uh, his own vanities and narcissisms like mm -hmm. everybody and then you're going to get a law enforcement point of view mm -hmm. and 
anybody who's followed the story knows that you know law enforcement uh, played uh, a central and a difficult role in this case. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, the way they had an informant inside the community, they, the way they blew mm -hmm. up the well, you know, yeah. to try and ingratiate themselves with the mm -hmm. Romans. So, you know, you've got, um, what you get when you get journalism is you get um, a Ludwig's point of view versus a law enforcement point mm -hmm. of view versus an oil and gas point of view mm -hmm. versus whichever um, locals speak the loudest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't possibly expect to get a fair and a complete portrait mm -hmm. of a family if you only know it through those points of view. It's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Do you feel uh, at some points you got sucked into the, the story itself to the police uh, raids or they were yeah, going in I think while you film him too, right? Right. Um, sucked into the story? Well, I mean, um, uh, in the sense of being, I guess, interviewed by the police, or were they asking you any, like, wanting to see your footage and, no, and no. stuff like that? No, 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 oh. um, no. You know, the, you know, law enforcement has a very difficult job in this case, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got, um, you know, the, the alleged crime or the crimes mm -hmm. uh, uh, that we was, was alleged to have committed the, the bombings mm -hmm. and so forth. Those which which they, he was never convicted. Right? Well, he was convicted in the first round, you know, 12 years ago. But was never charged in the second round of bombings mm -hmm. in the Tom's Lake area. But you know, mm -hmm. law enforcement has a very difficult job there. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're hard. Um, they're hard cases. These are dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, these are potentially dangerous explosions. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, they've got a difficult job. There's no, you know, they would not share anything with me mm -hmm. in an open case, neither would I expect them to. Mm -hmm. You know, they obviously knew I was making a film, you know, mm -hmm. in fact. Yeah. But they um, didn't demand to see your footage uh, either. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. No, that um, wouldn't um, that wouldn't that wouldn't have been appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, I have to say that mm -hmm. um, both as a citizen mm -hmm. and under the law, if I had evidence of mm -hmm. a crime in progress mm -hmm. or evidence in a crime that had taken place, mm -hmm. I would be under a legal obligation, and I think as an, an obligation as a citizen, mm -hmm. to pass it off to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, in terms of footage, there are uh, some uh, footage uh, shot by the Ludwig family. Uh, did you have full access of uh, all the footage and then you pick and choose uh, some of the footage? How did that process of footage selection uh, go? Well, um, uh, we gave the Ludwig, you know, I gave the I gave the family a laptop and a hard drive mm -hmm. and uh, and the means to digitize all of the footage, mm -hmm. which they did, and they handed me off uh, a hard drive with dozens and dozens of hours of that footage, mm -hmm. and I selected what I want. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that the family gave me a pretty complete, uh, mm -hmm. you know, selection of the footage. There may be things they don't, they didn't give me that they, you know, felt were sensitive or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I, uh, I take them at face value when they say they gave me everything. Mm -hmm. Right. I've shown the film so far in Toronto and in England, Ireland. It's been seen in Greece, and Israel, and the U.S. But the audience that I really want to see the film is an Alberta audience because everywhere else in the world this is just a story, mm -hmm. but in Alberta this is a you know, this is a key issue, this is a, you know, uh, a, a central industry, so I'm really delighted to be here at the Calgary Film Festival. But more importantly, for your audience, we're opening the film in theaters on October 21st at the Plaza in Calgary and at the Metro in Edmonton. It'll be running for a week in both of those cities. And then over the course of the winter, in conjunction with Film Circuit, we'll be presenting the film in small communities all across Alberta, Northern BC, Saskatchewan. So mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to giving uh, you know the audience in the areas that are most affected mm -hmm. by oil and gas a chance to see the film yeah. and uh, engage in this debate. I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to it. Yeah.